Welcome to the BEC Bridge, a new initiative of the Barbados Employers Confederation. We are here on location at Heaven St. Villa in Royal Westmoreland St. James, a beautiful villa in the Sotheby's Realty Catalog. It is my pleasure to introduce to you your host, Sheena Mears Granville, Executive Director of the Barbados Employers Confederation. Welcome to the BEC Bridge, the monthly podcast that connects employers to employees, connects you to compliance, and provides a deeper look into HR trends. I am Sheena Mears Granville, your host. This series aims to give both employers and employees a safe space to discuss trending topics and efficiently address matters of employment. You can also expect to get tips and guidance on best practices and compliance for human resource management. So without further ado, welcome to the BEC Bridge. Our first BEC Bridge episode is all about the new normal, new working arrangements. Today, we're talking trust and leadership with Shane Howell, who is an expert on HR strategy. Attorney Kristen Turton will sit with me to discuss legal issues such as who is responsible when employees work from home. Look out for our segment with funny HR stories and learn just what is a CVQ. Stay with us to hear how you, the average Barbadian, voted when we asked about the perks of hybrid work and how employers responded when asked about the biggest challenge with flexible work, all as we explore the pros and cons of flexible work arrangements. Today, I have with me Shane Howell. Shane is the Director of Human Resource Strategy at Antilles Economics and someone who's passionate about researching trust and leadership. That's what we're talking about today. Thank you for joining me, Shane. Welcome. So I know that you are interested in trust and leadership. So I took a look at the 2022 Elderman Trust Barometer. And of the studied institutions, business is once again the most trusted. At 61%, business ranked higher than NGOs, who scored 59%, and government at 52%. The media only scored 50%. And 77% of the respondents trusted their employer making that relationship, the employer-employee relationship, one that is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Now I know Anthony's Economics is in the process of conducting some research on trust and leadership in Barbados. Mm -hmm. But can you share some preliminary insights with us? Okay, all right, well again, thanks for having me here um, and for inviting Anthony's. So let me just start by saying that the reason why we actually conducted the research is largely because there's a, a significant dialogue and narrative around engagement. So everyone is talking about engagement within the workplace. And we have a very simple premise, which is really that we're not focusing on maybe what will move the needle more, which is trust, and largely trust in leadership. Yeah? So with that said, we would have conducted the research and we're actually in the process of, of extending the study. And what we found is quite glaring, a little, a little bit concerning, to be honest. So I think one of the major things that we found is just around one in two employees, so just around 50, 53% of employees trust their leaders, which means that obviously a significant portion, just about one in two, do not trust their leaders. That I think is telling, and it's something that organizations need to pay significant attention to. Beyond that, another statistic that I think many organizations are familiar with, especially those conducting engagement surveys and those, again, that are involved in this discussion around engagement because they recognize the relationship between productivity, is that there's a, a statistic that you know, the um, employee net promoter score, which essentially speaks to whether an employee is willing to recommend their organization as a good place to work. Now, from a scoring standpoint, that operates on a scale of negative 100, which you can imagine is it's not good. No one wants to be Very there. bad. <laughs> The positive 100, yeah? And currently, within the results, employers are scoring, or the net promoter score is around negative 45. That's the average for Barbados. That's the average for Barbados right now. 
and that is significant. That is one of the more significant metrics that I have found that is very concerning. And again, this is something that I believe employers may be seeing as they're doing their own surveys, but it speaks to the mindset of the workforce at this stage and the level of disenfranchisement, so to speak. And those scores are very interesting because I quoted from the international survey mm -hmm. and 77% 70, of employers are saying they're tr they actually trust their employee. 77% of employees mm -hmm. are saying they trust their employer. Mm -hmm. But here on the ground in Barbados, mm -hmm. we're about 50% that trust their employer. Uh, mm -hmm. So clearly there's significant work that needs to be done. Yeah. And, and a lot of employees are not in a position where they want to recommend their workplace as a place to come and work. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, those statistics are pretty um, staggering. And I think it shows... I agree with you that there's a lot of work that we need to do here on moving that bar. What I would say, though, is that within the same Edelman barometer, if you've been tracking it for a few years, we've seen that there's been some movement of that needle. So I believe that a couple of years ago, those numbers were actually lower. What it may suggest, and this is strictly speculative, that as organizations are paying more attention to this whole idea of trust in leadership and engagement, that they're actively working on trying to improve things. So I am hoping that that is the direction that we, within Barbados, that we can move in a similar direction. And thanks for that ray of hope, <laughs> that we're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It would have been horrible if you said we were going um, closer to negative 100. Mm -hmm. So the um, pandemic, COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic, ushered in a lot of changes in the way how we work. Mm -hmm. and we had a lot of persons had to go on hybrid work, remote work at the height of the pandemic. And we know things are, are changing now as we go into our new normal, mm -hmm. what that looks like. So what we did is we asked Barbadians how they prefer to work, if they preferred hybrid or strictly in office work. 76% mm -hmm. of respondents said they preferred hybrid work. So some mixture of work from home, remote work and working in office. But we have about a quarter of the respondents, 24%, saying they actually prefer to work exclusively in office. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen any research around those types of numbers, around those types of issues mm -hmm. that would suggest maybe why you think persons would want to work in office versus um, maybe working exclusively from home? Right, so I think we're getting several bits of information coming from research in different places. Even within the study that we're doing, we have I think maybe one or two questions that start to tease out this whole idea of person's preference. And I think one of the things that we're seeing is that at the end of the day, we are social beings. Whether you're introverted, extroverted, you're ambivert, whatever the case, we are social beings. So persons appreciate having that opportunity to engage with their colleagues, etc. That, that's natural. And it does lend to communication. It does lend to, to building and nurturing relationships. At the same time, though, the appetite for hybrid working is still there, as the numbers show. And that is because, obviously, persons have different needs. And I think COVID would have exposed that significantly, where you know, persons had child care responsibilities, adult care responsibilities, and other things going on. So then there was an acknowledgment that persons wanted to have a bit more control of their schedules. So I think we have to be cognizant of the fact that the workforce is a diverse one. We have persons that, whether it be age, age differences, gender differences, and by extension, having different responsibilities. And persons ultimately want to have a say in how they work. Persons ultimately want to have, a, have some measure of control. And once we're talking about the whole idea of trust, that is all trust is really kind of centered around. How much latitude do I give you? How much do I trust you to deliver what you're supposed to deliver on? So trust is fundamental, even when we're talking about the, the flexible working arrangement. Even if you're talking about working in office, there's still a measure of trust that is kind of embedded in that employer-employee um, relationship. Mm -hmm. You talked a bit about control. Mm -hmm. And the feedback I get from employers and employees is that people are looking at hybrid work and remote work as a way for them to get a better balance mm 
mm -hmm. between work and life. And mm -hmm. you, know, you talked about the child care responsibilities. We know increasingly persons have responsibilities to care for elderly parents mm -hmm. um, and elderly family members. So it's not just control for work, but control of their lives and being able to manage their lives. So if, that is the feedback I'm getting, which kind mm -hmm. of aligns with what you are sharing in terms of why people are looking for that balance. Yeah, definitely. Now, you would have done a presentation for us at our recently held symposium just mm -hmm. about two months ago. Yeah. And at that point in time, you talked a bit about, you know, working time and um, how that meshes, meshes mm -hmm. with how people want to work. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, on January 19th, the ILO released a report called Working Time and Work-Life Balance Around the World. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the first time that they've done such a report, and it's, some interesting things came out. But one of the things that struck me is there's an entire chapter, chapter four, so pretty early up, which speaks about working time matches and mismatches. So could you share with me, let's chat a bit about your research mm -hmm. into that area. All right, so when we look at, again, the whole idea of, of working time and working matches, as you say, again, we're going back to the, the idea of employee needs and what they need. And actually, I want to maybe go a step further back and revisit the whole idea of trust, because you're talking, Lord is still saying yes, around trust, trust and leadership. leadership. And there's an analogy that I like to use whenever I'm speaking to this, which is, if you think about trust, and we, we take it away from the, from the employee for a minute, and we look at it within the finance, the finance context, when we talk about credit, credit is based on trust. Yeah? And so if an organization doesn't have the cash reserves to do whatever they want, their credit score essentially gives them access to resources that they wouldn't ordinarily have. Yeah? So trust is embedded in, in that. Take that and transpose that into the working world, the, work, the workplace, and ultimately when a leader is giving their employees trust, they're actually getting something in return. They're getting access to discretionary effort. They're getting access to creativity. They're getting access to several different things that an employee that is less engaged will not give them. And just for the record, that is another one of the things that we saw in the research that employees were actually saying that when my employer doesn't show me trust, I'm less creative, I'm less likely to give them solutions to problems that they're having. I find it takes longer for me to do the most fundamental things, and I actively look for another job. So all of these are costs to the organization. When we talk about different types of working arrangements now, what essentially an employer is saying is, I'm willing to kind of meet you where you're at once I don't sacrifice my business needs, so I'm giving you more control over the arrangements that you have, whether that be um, compressed work weeks, whether that be when I can start the shift when I want, whether I work four hours today, but once I'm hitting my deliverables, you're satisfied with that. You're simply giving the employer greater control, and that is something that employees want. And I think one of the things that we've seen, and I saw an article only this weekend with Dr. Sonia Nurse, who was speaking to the fact that the numbers in the polyclinics of persons seeking mental health have increased by about 200%. That speaks to the fact that employees are coming to work burdened. And ultimately, if we expect to get the most productivity out of employees, we can't turn a blind eye to it. Giving them control over their work schedules is core to business. But there's something that you said I think we have to highlight. You said in keeping with the business needs. Mm -hmm. So we have to find that balance where you're trying to give employees more control, mm -hmm. more flexibility, mm -hmm. but the needs of the business still have to be met. Yeah, you know, definitely. one of my mantras is only successful businesses employ people. Correct. So the needs mm -hmm. of the business has to be central as you discuss flexible work arrangements. Mm -hmm. um, what I also find particularly interesting in what you said was how trust when there's the trust in the employee-employer relationship, how that manifests in terms of unleashing creativity and discretionary effort, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, as HR professionals, as business leaders, we need to be having conversations around how do we increase the trust? 
How do we manage that trust and unleash that potential within our organizations? Mm -hmm. So before we go, um, just a couple of things. So we asked employers, what has been the biggest unexpected challenge since implementing flexible work? Guess what they told us? Their challenge, what scored higher, highest was lack of efficient communication at 42%. And I think that's something that, you know, we can't dismiss. The ability to communicate, the collaborative effort is greater when you have everyone in a single space together. And I know you mentioned um, communication as one of the things that came up. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to know if you have any advice for employers based on, on that feedback. Okay. So person said that uh, it's one of the greatest challenges it doesn't necessarily mean that what we were doing within the organizations was perfect as it, as it existed. Mm -hmm. With that said, I think, you know, for many persons, it's easy for me to walk down the hall, knock on Sheena's door, go by Shane's cubicle and ask a question. And ask a question with respect to, uh, you know, how is the progress on this particular assignment or whatever the case might be. I think all we need to move towards is greater predictability. So if persons are working remotely, if persons are working in a hybrid arrangement, setting schedule, setting time so that you as the, as the supervisor, you're not just knocking on the door, but you're saying, let's have a touch base at 10 a.m. in the morning or 3, the, 3 p.m. Um, in the afternoon so that there's sharing, there's that communication, but it is in a more predictable way so that all persons can be satisfied that they're getting what they need and that their needs are being met in a reasonable fashion. Thank you so much for that, Shane, and thank you for finding the time in your busy day to have a chat with me. But before we go, I'll give you about 30 seconds. Is there anything else you want to share with employers? Anything, um, any parting words from our time together? I would just say that the whole idea of, of leadership and, and trust it is not just uh, something that is trending. Ultimately, it's a strategic priority. I think organizations need to ensure that they are able to gather data to give them insight into where are we, you know, how do our employees feel about us at this point in time. With respect to the survey that we're doing, as we said, it's still out in the market. And if employers uh, want to contact us to try to find out how their own companies are performing, feel free, there's no cost at all. Just contact Anthony's Economics and we'll be, you know, more than willing to share the survey with them. Thank you for that, Shane. I'll be sure that we can place a link to that survey and how employers can reach out to you so they can get more information on trust and leadership within their own organizations. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Shanika Bess, Employment Relations Advisor at the Barbados Employers Confederation. And this is Nothing Surprises Me. I work in HR. Over the years, Working in HR and people management, at times we hear many stories that make our eyes open wide or make us laugh. This segment is dedicated to those stories that make us love our job a little more. Our first story is called, It's My Right. A pregnant employee requested to work remotely. At first thought, one would assume it was because of a medical reason related to the pandemic or safety and health concerns. However, it turns out the reason the employee gave for wanting to work from home was because she was pregnant and did not want to spend any money on maternity outfits. As we are highlighting the topic, it's my right. Unless required to wear a uniform, it is the responsibility of an employee to be suitably outfitted for work. In this instance, it would not be a reasonable expectation for an employer to reorganize work. Our final story is called, Make It A Happy Birthday. An employee called in stating that he's unable to attend work. In addition to stating he would not be able to make it into work, he also stated his reason was because it is his birthday and he will be out drinking with the guys. We all enjoy a good celebration, but remember, it should not be at the expense of others. It is the responsibility of the employee to request vacation or ask to be rostered off ahead of time to accommodate plans.
today on our Spotlight on Employment Law, I have with me Kristen Turton. Kristen is an attorney at law who specializes in business protection services and personal injury claims. So thank you, Kristen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we've been discussing new, the new work normal, flexible working arrangements. And we know that that brings added considerations for employers. We know about the duty of care that is established under common law. It's now in our safety and health at work legislation. But what, how does an employer have a duty of care when an employee is working at a coffee shop? They're not even in my workspace. Talk to me about this. Well, the employer has a responsibility to take reasonable steps for the safety of their employees when they're performing work. And the truth is that it's not limited to just those specific environments that they have direct control over, like an office, for example. They do have responsibilities to implement systems, to provide suitable equipment and so on to ensure that their employees are safe. Now, when an employee is working at home, for example, it may be a little easier because you can have the employee do a self-assessment of their home. You can identify the things that are the places that they would have to work within the home. You can identify, for example, um, things that they can do to make their home safe and have the employee report back to you and sign off on that. When you're looking at a space like a coffee shop, or for example, you might have an employee that wants to work in different locations on different days, what may be useful is to still have them do some form of self-assessment and provide you with information confirming that the space is safe because they also have a responsibility for their own safety. How the employer protects himself though is by providing guidance to the employee as to what might be a safe type of space or the characteristics that a safe space would have. So the key there is get it's information. It's for the employer to get information from the employee through that self-assessment, but for the employer also to share information on the type of workspaces that might be suitable? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. Now, we have a little bit of time, so I want you to tell me, if you had to give Barbadian employers a single piece of advice that would assist them as they plan their work and look at liability and responsibility, what would that advice be? Consult, document, enforce. You have to do those things together. So you consult with your team members um, in relation to the self-assessments and so on. You actually consult with third parties and specialists who might help you to understand what would be safe environments or equipment to be used. You document that clearly so everyone knows what their responsibilities are and everyone is clear as to when liability can arise. And finally, you enforce it because there's no value if you don't enforce it. So make sure that if there are breaches, they're enforced. Make sure there are mechanisms to track um, the performance of the steps the employee has to take in that system. And make sure that you are consistent in your training and communication with your team about the need to comply with that system. Thank you so much, Kristen. The takeaway, consult, document, and enforce. Those are your three keywords from Kristen Turton. My name is Sharissa Holmes and I am the training officer at the Barbados Employers Confederation. This is a quick training highlight. So we can't talk about connections to best practices on compliance without discussing training. So here's the scoop. Coming up in February, there are two sessions all about managing teams collaborative workplaces, mastering hybrid team dynamics, and a three-day workshop for supervisors called Managing for Success. Join us on Wednesday, February 15th, as we discuss collaborative workplaces, mastering hybrid team dynamics. The 21st century reality is that teams now function with remote workers and across various geographic locations. As the speed of change and innovation is driving new team structures than existed decades prior, this workshop will tackle how to get teams to work effectively across many channels. Managing for Success is a three-day workshop for supervisors. From February 21st to 23rd, we will provide a high-level overview of the critical aspects of being a supervisor, especially when you come from up the ranks. 
Presenters will cover the importance of managing yourself, understanding labor legislation, and managing others. Topics include elements of effective supervision, performance management, understanding labor legislation, conducting discipline, occupational safety and health, managing conflict and diversity, and team building. Additional self-paced content on emotional intelligence and time management will be available online. For the full program outlines, browse our website at barbadosemployers.com. Under the events pane, select calendar and navigate through the dates to register or email training at barbadosemployers.com. For our final training tidbit of this segment, what is a NRCBQ? Did you know that to earn a vocational qualification, persons must perform and document various job functions to prove that they have the required knowledge and skills? This is because vocational qualifications are work-based, meaning that they are used to ensure that persons can prove competence in their chosen field. In Barbados, we offer national vocational qualifications, also called NVQs, which are only recognized in Barbados, along with CVQs, Caribbean Vocational Qualifications. These are recognized regionally. So as an HR assistant, completing the Human Resources Management NVQ proves to employers that you are qualified and experienced in performing the basic functions of HR in Barbados. We want to express heartfelt thanks to all of our featured guests for taking time out of their busy schedules and sitting with me and enlightening us on flexible work. To you, our listeners, thank you for tuning in. We hope that we have shared a new perspective on flexible working arrangements and given you some food for thought. Along with this podcast, we have provided some useful links for those of you interested in continuing the conversation and look out for our polls with Barbados Today. You can find the BEC on Facebook and Instagram at Barbados Employers Confederation and on Twitter at BEC Business. You will also find a wealth of information on our website, BarbadosEmployers.com. We invite you to join us on Barbados Today via Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram for our next episode on March 5th where we will take a look at trending HR topics, great resignation, quiet quitting, employee centricity, all of those we will explore as we continue to build employment connections via the BEC Bridge.